Good morning, everyone. All right, today we're going to be working on uh, get-ups. Uh, if you're familiar with the Turkish get-up with kettlebell exercises, this is similar to that. We're not dealing with kettlebells. We're not putting anything in our hand. We are primarily focusing on connecting the posterior shoulder drive to our posterior hip drive, a function of our gait, um, gait mechanics. A lot of people, when they, they lose the ability to drive through their shoulder, related to the opposite hip, uh, which is going to be a part of our glute function. And once we lose this, it creates all kinds of issues with our shoulders, as well as issues down into the hip and into the foot. So uh, I'm anticipating that we're going to be moving in, getting into movements that are going to be, can be intense on the shoulder. So I want to be very cautious. The rules of pain need to be uh, paid attention to and honored here. So rules of pain, real quick, just as a refresher. Pain is a binary. It is either you're in pain or you are not in pain. It is either yes or it is no. There are no other answers to that equation. If pain is a yes, then it doesn't mean we're not going to move into something, but we are going to change how we move into it. So once pain is a yes, we need to put it on a uh, quantify it on a scale of zero to 10, zero being not painful, 10 being excruciating. As long as we can keep the pain level below a level three on a, that scale of 10, then you can move into things slowly, cautiously, safely, non-forcefully. If you are triggering into that three or above, you're going too far, too fast. You need to slow down and back off. Uh, and the way I define that level three is when we move and it starts to show up on our face, we start to make that pirate look. That means you are triggering pain at a spinal cord level too far, too fast, too much, back off. Um, and when some of this shoulder stuff, I might even say, don't let it get above a level two, keep it even lower because the shoulder is one of those tricky areas, a level one, two, if you're doing too much of it can irritate so that you're, it hurts more later. It may not hurt while you're doing it, but it might hurt later. So be a little extra cautious going through some of these movements today. This is a, uh, we're working on building the, uh, uh, the foundational level of getting up off the floor from a lying on our back to standing. It may take months to really build that foundation. So we're not trying to do it in just one day. Uh, I don't want to rush it. I don't want to make things worse. I don't want it to trigger injury. So with all that being said, let's get started. All right, we are going to start with our staff, getting a nice uh, shoulder width grip on the staff. I want to go ahead and uh, engage our staff like we're trying to bend to the staff or like we're trying to break it in two. Having that bend happen by spiraling through the wrists, elbows, and shoulder blades. So I want to see those elbow pits spiraling up to the ceiling, shoulder blades packing down onto the rib cage. I want to feel those shoulder blades really engaged. We're going to start with the uh, staff down at our thighs. And we're going to get into our breath first. Nice inhale in through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. On our inhale, we're getting into our balloon or crocodile breath, filling up our abdominal wall. I want that breath moving forward into the belly, out through the sides, and into that low back space. On the exhale, as we exhale, drawing our navel up and in to our spine. Nice big inhale, inflates that belly. Nice exhale, navel to spine. And as we're getting in our nice inhale and exhale, we're gonna start playing with our pelvic tilt. On the inhale, allow that pelvis to tilt towards the floor or tilt forward so that we that belly kind of opens up and we get some sway in our low back. And on the exhale, as we draw that navel in, we're scooping our pelvis so that we feel in scooping the pelvis, I wanna feel that core lightly engage. Inhale, pelvis goes forward. Also notice as you inhale, rib cage sticks out and flares. 
Exhale as we scoop the pelvis. I want to feel that rib cage move down. Pelvis is scooping up, rib cage moving down. Feel your core really light up on fire. And one last thing we can try to see if we can engage on our exhale is with that scoop, the more you scoop, I want to be able to feel some tightening or tensing in the glutes. Glutes are lightly contracting from that scoop, rib cage down, feel that engagement of the core. Now a reminder that we are bending the staff on the next inhale as we get that nice big sway in the back. On our exhale, as we're scooping and feeling that rib drop, we're also slowly bringing elbows up towards the ears. I want to go nice and slow. Find that end range, squeeze the elbows, inhale, arms come forward, fill up that belly, exhale, scoop as you squeeze those elbows back. We're going to do 10 nice slow squeezes on that exhale. And with each squeeze, we're not going into pain, but we're seeing if we can squeeze, get a little bit more draw of those elbows pulling back. Notice any differences in the right shoulder compared to the left shoulder. I want to make sure that it, this is not painful. If you're experiencing pain on this, then you need to back off. As we get to the 10th one, we're going to find tension pulling those shoulder elbows back, but not fully kind of finding a light tension space. And now we're going to elevate our shoulder blades, reaching up to the ceiling. And then we're going to pack the shoulder blades by pulling them down. We're exhaling as we reach. <sighs> Inhale as you pull the shoulder blades down. Now, as you pull the shoulder blades down, try not to bend the elbows. Keep the elbows actively pushing up as you pull your shoulder blades down. On the tenth one of these, we're going to reach up, keep the shoulder blades elevated, and we're coming back to pulling those elbows back. So with those shoulder blades elevated, as we exhale, drawing the shoulder elbows back, we should have a little bit more range. I want to continue to have our nice inhale, uh, filling up the belly, exhale, scoop and drop the rib as we pull the elbows back. Again, making sure that this is not painful and noticing any differences in tension between the right shoulder and the left shoulder. After 10, we'll let our arms drop down. We're going to move the staff to behind us, palms facing back. We're still spiraling those elbow pits forward. That spiral of the elbow pit should be coming up all the way up the long arm bone to the shoulder, spinning that shoulder so it spins back, which should help drop those shoulder blades and open up the chest. I don't want shoulders rounded forward. I want them uh, spiraled so that you feel them rounded back. From here, nice inhale into that belly, exhale, navel to spine as you slowly lift elbows up to the ceiling. Inhale as you let it soften, exhale as you lift, squeeze those elbows up. Now I want to maintain tension of that spiral through the arms. So I'm not holding on to the staff right now. My arm is spiraling out and back, feeling that. As I have the staff and I'm lifting, I'm engaging in that spiral. There's not a whole lot of spiral movement, but I am moving into that spiral as I lift. The more you're able to engage that spiral, will continue to open up your chest, and you can even kind of get a little reach or lift through the sternum, moving it up towards the ceiling. 
You can even allow the shoulders to spiral in a little bit as you let them drop so that you can re-engage that external rotation spiral as you lift. After 10, we're gonna flip our palms to the opposite side of the staff and we're doing the exact same thing. Bending the staff away from the body, spiraling those elbow pits forward as you lift. Again, keeping it nice and light because I do not want to move into pain. And with each one, seeing if you can squeeze a little bit higher and can you continue to spiral those elbows out as you lift, feeling that nice opening stretch through the chest. Once we get 10 of those, we're gonna go ahead and set the staff down to the side and we're gonna get into some bowls of soup. So bowls of soup, arms are actively straight, spread the palms out as wide as you can. Fingers spread as wide as possible. I wanna feel the stretch in the palms from trying to extend those fingers away from one another so much. We're gonna spiral our palms up towards the ceiling as high as you can. And we're gonna work one side at a time going back and forth. We're turning that, those palms up. We're gonna spiral the palms down and continue to spiral as far as we can. I wanna spin the ball of the femur inside the shoulder socket. I don't want the shoulder to start to round forward. I don't want to get that shoulder blade engaged. So I want to see how far can we spin that long arm bone without the shoulder blade getting engaged. And then we're going to sp spiral the palm back up and farther. As far as you can spiral it the other direction, then we'll switch to the other side doing the same thing. <sighs> Going back and forth. I want to go slow on this because I want this to be as smooth as possible. If you're feeling some clunkiness or some kind of crepitus in the shoulder, slow it down. As long as it is not painful, it's okay to move into it slowly. What may help with uh, releasing some of that clunkiness is to also reach away like you're trying to touch your fingers to the walls out to your side. Imagine you're trying to create some gap space in that shoulder socket. Reaching away as you spiral should help a little bit to smooth out that, that move, that glide within that shoulder socket. Now, as we're getting into this, we can start to go a little further with our spirals, continuing to spiral internally and now we can start to let that shoulder blade round up and over and forward as it opens back up to the other side, same thing. This allows us to get a little bit more movement up into that upper shoulder, upper back area. And this is again a great movement to notice the difference right side compared to the left side. And we're gonna be working a lot on spirals to the elbow. This is actually gonna be a really important functional component of our getup, being able to have this spiral action through both shoulders. All right, we're now gonna drop down to the floor, getting into our quadruped position, spreading fingers out nice and wide, grounding the palms, surf fingers all the getting as much surface area as the of the hand engaged to the floor elbows are actively extended and straight but trying not to lock them out toes are going to be tucked we're going to focus on the feet first we're going to do a little bit of foot mobility so want the big toe tucked underneath try to have your heels straight up to the ceiling we're inhaling as we rock forward. We're exhaling as we allow our hips to sink back into our heels. Very intentionally loading into that big toe joint and into the medial arch of the foot. Inhale brings us forward. Exhale, we're sinking our hips back to our heels. 
Now, as we sink the hips back to the heels, imagine you have a tail and you're sticking that tail up towards the ceiling. I want to turn the tailbone, tailbone more up as we sink back. Inhale comes forward, exhale. With each one, can you feel a little bit more load and stretch into the ball of the foot and the arch of the foot? Next, we're gonna turn our heels out as far as we can and seeing if we can get tucked underneath all the way out to the pinky toe. We're getting the other four toes tucked. You're gonna do, everything else is gonna be exactly the same. Inhale forward, exhale as we sink our hips back to the heels with that tailbone kind of actively turning up towards the ceiling. Inhale comes back forward, exhale, seeing if we can sink in a little deeper. And this is a great movement to notice the difference between the right side and the left side. On the next one, as you sink into the feet, we're gonna kind of stay sunk. It doesn't have to be maximum. I wanna be a kind of light tension. And now we're gonna do our windshield wipers, letting the heels roll all the way in so that we're now moving to the ball of the big toe and then rolling back out to the pinky toes. And going back and forth, nice and slow. Again, notice the difference of how does this feel on the right foot compared to the left foot, especially with the big toe. How does the right big toe feel compared to the left big toe? Is one side a little bit more sensitive? Is it a little stiffer? Is it achy? Is it restricted? Is it unable to move? Is it painful? If it's painful, then I want to really pay attention to that. We're gonna now come off the toes. We can let the ankles go nice and flat. And we're gonna do a little bit of just assessment of the knees in the front of the ankles. We're inhaling forward, exhaling as we allow the hips to sink to the heels. If you can sit hips all the way to heels, great. Inhale comes back forward. Exhale, sinking in, seeing if we can sink in a little deeper. And I want to feel into the front of the ankle space. The first part here is just noticing, can you get your hips to your heels or is there a little gap space? If you can't sit one hip to the heel, that's going to be maybe an indication of some knee inflammation. With the front of the ankles, I want to feel if there's tightness and tension more on one ankle than the other. And do they go flat to the floor or is there a little bit of space underneath one side? And as we're sinking back, we can start to let our hands slide back if you're able to get more weight on your heels, but we're gonna to continue to move forward and back. I don't wanna just come back and sit on the heels. Again, feeling into the front of the ankle space. If one ankle is tighter or unable to uh, reach the floor as much as the other one, then that's going to be, uh, that'll be an important function of our gait. So I kind of want to pay attention to that. All right, we're now going to come to uh, get into our wrists so we can relax our feet and toes, can spread hands, grounded palms. We're gonna, uh, now we're moving more forward to load into the wrist space. Exhale as you rock forward, inhale as you rock back. Notice the difference of the right wrist and the left wrist. Is one side a little tighter and more sensitive than the other? We're just doing five reps for the wrists. Next, we're going to turn the fingers out to the side and we're going to get our side to side glide. You know, I like on this one, I like having that push pull effect through the palms. As I'm moving away from a palm, I'm pushing. As I'm moving towards the palm, I'm pulling. So I have this active push and pull moving me side to side. The more active I am through the palms, 
should create a little bit more active shoulder blade. The shoulder blade will be a little bit more active on the rib cage. Next, we're going to turn the fingers all the way back towards the knees. Closer the hands are to the knees, the less intense that this will be, and that's where I want this to be low in intensity. We're going to inhale now going forward. Exhale as you sink hips back to heels lightly, keeping the palms loaded to the floor. This one's a good one to notice the difference in the right forearm and the left forearm, but it's not uncommon on this one for the dominant side arm to feel tighter, thicker, and denser, so I don't want it. This one's not a major assessment point. We can come off the wrist and roll them out, and we're going to come back and do one more movement in, from our wrists. Re-engaging palms, spread fingers, active uh, elbows. Now we're going to work on our, our uh, spirals of our elbows, kind of like we're doing the bowls of soup, but our hands are grounded to the floor. And again, I want to feel how much of that spin of the long arm bones can we get at the shoulder socket as well as down in the wrist. So elbow pits, I want to turn them as much forward as possible and then spinning them in so that they turn as much towards my feet as possible. As we're going back and forth, Start to notice how the spin of the shoulder blade or the of the elbow interacts with your shoulder blade. As we spiral our elbow pits inward, shoulder blades should kind of <clears throat> round up, like they're moving up our back, moving over the top of our rib cage. As we're spiraling elbow pits forward, the shoulder blades should be packing down on our upper back. So as I spiral elbow pits inside, shoulder blades are moving up, like they're moving up towards the ears. As I spiral them forward, shoulder blades are sliding down towards the hip pockets. Start to accentuate that movement. Feel shoulder blades round up. We can even get a little push into the floor and you should be able to feel some stretch in between the shoulder blades. And then when you spiral the elbow pits forward, feel those shoulder blades slide down the ribs like they're moving towards your back hip pockets. And we can come off our wrists, roll them out a little bit, and we're going to change into our shin box position. I'm starting out in my left side shin box. I'm bringing left hand down to the floor. Nice grounded palm. We're going to get that same spiraled elbow effect, rolling that elbow out and away. Feel that shoulder blade pack down, open chest, lifting up through the sternum. Focusing on our back hip first. We're going to start with our kind of like our little knee openers, lifting a knee up towards the ceiling. Nice slow squeeze on the exhale. Inhale, let it back down. Exhale, lift and squeeze. We're going to do five of these, and then we're going to work our uh, our uh, our pelvic tilts before we switch to the other side. Notice how high that knee is coming up. Notice the tension in the hip. On the fifth one, as we let that knee down, we're still focusing on this back hip on the same side. We're not switching sides. We're now going to inhale, allowing that back hip to drop to touch the floor. On the exhale, we're lifting it off the floor and reaching forward as we kind of scoop the tailbone into it. See if you can feel this light stretch on the front of the hip. Can you feel the contraction on the glute in the back? Inhale, lets that hip all the way back. Exhale, scooping into it. This is an important part of our get up. The ability to get into this extended hip position with that active glute. 
If you are struggling to find full hip extension, this is really tight in the front and you can't quite get far enough in that hip to feel the glute. You're not going to be, you're going to, this is going to be a limitation in your get up until this improves. So this is a big movement to improve, to work on. Once we do five or so, we're going to slowly shift to the other side, grounding palm, spiraling that elbow out and away. Feel that shoulder blade pack down, sternum lifts up, focusing on that back hip again. Starting with the lifting of that knee, nice, slow, open. Inhale, lets it back down. Exhale, lift and squeeze. How does this side feel compared to the other side? Is it tighter? Is it more restricted? I got less range of motion on this, uh, this hip for this particular movement. Although after a few reps, it's starting to open up a little bit. After five, allow that hip to drop down or knee to drop down. Now we're focusing on the hip. Inhale, let that hip reach towards the floor. See if it can touch the floor. Exhale, we're picking it off the floor and we're scooping as we move forward. Man, this one's tight. It's gonna take a little work to get that glute engaged. Inhale, lets it drop. Exhale, scoops into it. Now, most people, when I teach this, I'd say 80% or more have some kind of hip imbalance when we're going through this particular series of movements. So after five of these, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do those a second time. Now what you're going to notice is on the second time, you should have more mobility in each of these movements. So we're going to start with that knee opener. Nice opening up of the knee, slow squeeze, and bringing it back down. Kiss the floor, exhale as you lift. This was my looser side, but even so, if, even though it was looser, I, the first time, I got even more mobility the second time. After five, we're coming back, we're staying on this side. Inhale, let the hip drop. Exhale, scoop into it. See if you can feel that glute engage. Now the reason I want to do this two times today is I want you to get the sense, the feel of how tight it was the first time and how as we come back to it a second time, there is an improvement in the quality of the range of motion. You have more range of motion. It's smooth, a little bit smoother. That's important, an important thing to kind of pay attention to. For one reason, let's come back to our knee openers here on the other side as we switch. If you're noticing a significant imbalance the first time and you, are move, you don't do these movements, then that imbalance is a part of how you are moving through your day. And if you come in and we do our mobility work, and as I'm talking, I'm looking at my left knee, my left hip, this has markedly improved just from the first rep round to the second round of doing this. And then after five, we're gonna to switch to dropping the hip and lifting it. So I want you to imagine you don't do this movement and you are as stiff and imbalanced as your first round. And that is the kinds of movements that you are feeding into your body on a day-to-day -day basis. You're not doing the movement prep, the movement restoration work, and you're going to be, you're moving with that imbalance through your day. The longer you are moving with that type of imbalance, the less efficient, the greater the irritation, the higher likelihood of inflammation, uh, pain, swelling, and pain. A little bit of movement, and hopefully you notice just by doing that two times, the market improvement in your movement quality, spending a little bit of time on the ground before you go into your day means that you will be moving better through the day and you will have better outcomes of your movement for the day. All right, we're going to switch back to our starting side. We are now focusing on the front hip. We're going to get into our folds. 
We're reaching our folds through the shin. So I want to get a nice hands, both hands reaching evenly through that shin. Uh, I don't want one hand reaching farther. Keep them square and even. As you exhale, inhale, we're coming all the way back up. Exhale, as we get a nice reach and fold. See if you can get a little deeper on your fold as you exhale with each one. After five, we're going to slowly transition to the other side, and we're going to do the same thing. Again, reaching even through that shin, hands reaching even. Nice exhale. Inhale as you bring it all the way back up. With each one, seeing if we can reach just a little bit further. Now this one's going to be another important one to notice the difference on the right side and the left side. And I'm going to make a prediction. In our hip mobility, with the, whichever hip in the back was tighter, my assumption will be that it, uh, the opposite side glute will be tighter. So we're, right now we are uh, getting a nice lengthening stretch on the glute. I'm on my right side shin box. When I reach, I'm getting that stretch on the right side glute. So if you had tightness in the left hip, when the left hip was in the back, my, uh, my educated guess is that the right glute would be the tighter glute. We're going to switch back to the other side. Now we're going to start going side to side with this. If the tightness you had was in the front of the right hip, then my, my guess is that the tighter glute is going to be on the left. And that's because these are functional opposites related to your gait mechanics. Again, these are going to be important things uh, to kind of work on as far as working on balance and gait. So now we're getting in, we're going to go start working our side to side. Nice, slow reach. As you come up and inhale, we'll go through another breath in and out as we shift all the way to the other side. And by going back and forth, we really get that sense of comparison, comparing one hip to the other hip. We're going to do about 10 total reps on this, going back and forth, 10 reps on each side. Once you've done three to five reps on each side, we're going to start to change our position. We're going to continue five more. But we're going to start to open up our shin box, start to let that back leg slide open a little bit more as you get that nice reach and fold. And then the same thing to the other side. Nice opening up by opening up that back hip. It's getting a little bit different mobility into that back hip. So the more we open it up, you may notice some differences in the right hip and the left hip based on these new positions. Again, that's going to be you good as far as mobilizing the hip a little bit more, but it's also important as far as assessment, just knowing what's going on in our bodies. And with each one, we're slowly opening that hip up more and more as much as we can without going into discomfort or pain. I don't want to force that hip open. I want to stay in that nice, juicy, comfortable um, range where it is not painful. I kind of don't even want to get on the edge of pain. This should feel good, not bad. If you have if your hips are nice and opened up and this is not painful, by now we can start to work on getting closer into what we would consider more of a yoga class pigeon pose. All right, so <clears throat> now we are going to get onto our back. Um, we're going to do a little bit of rotation for the spine, 
um, working to ground into the shoulders, and then we're going to start uh, getting some activation into the glutes. So we are laying down on our back. Feet are coming off the floor. Knees are going to be tucked in so that our hips are less than 90 degrees. I want the knees a little bit closer to the chest so that your low back is flat to the floor. The knees can be right around 90 degrees. We're going to bring our arms out to the side. This is where I want to imagine that we're laying in a bed of sand. But I really want to be mostly focused just on the upper back with our imprint in the sand. I'm less concerned about elbows and hands right now. I want to feel my shoulder blades spread out as much as possible and ground into the floor as much as possible. I want to dig those shoulders into that sand so that I have a perfect imprint. And I don't want those shoulders to shift or move or slide or lift off the floor at all. So really focus on shoulder blades pushing down, grounding, spread and grounded into the floor. From here, we're going to slowly let the hips roll as we exhale, but we're only going as far as we can keep those shoulder blades spread and grounded into the floor. We're going to inhale as we come back to center, exhale as we go to the other side. The slower you go on this, the better. If you go fast, you will lose control of the shoulder blades. I want to be able to feel that shoulder drive into the floor. Again, that's going to be a part of our gait mechanics that we're, we're really working on here. Do we have that posterior core drive? As you feel those shoulders glued to the floor, we can slowly let those hips uh, rotate a little bit more and a little bit more as long as it doesn't lift or slide at the shoulder blades. Notice how does this feel on the right side compared to the left side? Can you go farther? Is it a little tighter? Is it more restricted? After about five up to 10 reps, we'll go ahead and let our feet come back down to the floor and we're going to let our legs go nice and straight. From here, we're going to get into our glute activation. So we're going to uh, bend one foot, make that foot come flat to the floor and we're moving that foot out to about 45 degrees from the midline of the body. I want a nice spread foot, round ball of the foot, ball of the pinky toe, ball of the big toe, and heel. All three points of contact need to be engaged in the floor. From here, all we're going to do is press into that floor, driving down in the knee, through the knee, and scooping that tailbone up towards the ceiling. I'm only lifting through one side. The opposite leg is completely relaxed. I want to imagine that I'm driving through this leg in order to push myself all the way onto my belly. If my other leg is pushing and lifting up, I will not be able to, to, to roll, right? This opposite leg, no energy, no force. It needs to be completely soft. Drive, scoop. We're seeing if we can feel that stretch through the front of the hip. Can we feel that, that tight contraction in the glute? This is basically the exact same movement that we were doing in our shin box when we were letting the hip drop and then scooping it up. We're trying to find that same hip extension glute activation. And the more you can press into the floor and scoop into it and feel that uh, glute light up, the better. I want to really feel that press down on the floor, engage that glute. After about five to ten reps, we're going to switch feet. So bringing that foot for, uh, flat to the floor, then moving it out to about 45 degrees from the midline of the body. 
Nice downward press through the knee into that foot. Scoop the tailbone up to the ceiling. Can you feel that stretch on the front of the hip? Inhale, we're letting it all the way back down. Exhale, scoop, feel that stretch. Scoop into it as much as you can to start to feel that tight contraction of the glute. This is a really good movement to assess one side compared to the other. When you're doing this on the right, well, and we're going to do this a second time through so that we can really get a good assessment point on it. So we'll get through our five to 10 reps on this side. We're going to go ahead and switch back to the other side. So we're going to do five reps on both sides. Now that we've gone through it, we should have a little bit better engagement. This time I really want to compare right side and left side. So the things I want to compare, notice your knee. Is it a little shaky? Is it wobbly? That's going to be an indication that there's some hip instability. How tight does it feel on the front of the hip as you scoop into it? That's going to be an indication of some, some immobility in the hip. And then can you feel that tight glute contraction? Is it more on one side compared to the other? So, Nice, slow exhale, squeeze into it. Really try to light that glute up. Inhale as you let it back down. Each one, feel the, uh, see if you can feel your foot nice and spread and grounded into the floor as you scoop. After five, we're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side in order to compare. So again, Scoop that tailbone, feel that scoop, that stretch on the front, feel that contraction in the rear. Notice if that knee is solid and stable. Is the stretch bigger or is it less on this side? Can you get more contraction or less contraction in the glute? Good. All right. So we're gonna switch back to the other side with our leg. Now though, we're bringing in our elbow. So we're gonna let our elbow come out to the side. My hand is off the floor, reaching up towards the ceiling. Right now I got my elbow at shoulder level. I wanna drop it down an inch or two so I'm a little bit below shoulder level. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna work on driving through the elbow at the same time that we are driving through our foot with the goal of lifting our sternum straight up to the ceiling. So my opposite hand, I am, I'm got my thumb on my sternum and then I'm pointing, extending my hand to reach that thumb. So I'm now pointing straight through the ceiling and I'm still over that sternum. My hand is an indication of where my sternum is going to. We're gonna drive through the foot, and I'm gonna go through this a little bit before I have you do it on your own. We're driving through the foot and the elbow at the exact same time to lift the sternum up. My hip is down, I'm not lifting up my hip off the floor. My opposite hip is off the floor because I'm driving through that side. But as I come to my elbow, sternum is up. What I don't want on this is I don't want to turn the sternum so that it's facing the wall and come up this way where my stern chest is to the side. I want to keep chest up as I drive down, lifting straight up. This is going to be, this will be hard for some people, especially on one side. Whichever side is less, is, is, has more lack of function in it, this is going to be more challenging if it's immobile, if it's unstable, all those things. So inhale as we come down to the floor. X, we're going to go ahead and lift elbow and foot up off the ground and then re-engage, press evenly to drive the sternum up. Inhale, drop a shoulder and then drop a shoulder. We'll do three up to five reps. 
And then we're going to switch and do the same thing on the other side. Elbow comes out to the side again, an inch or two below shoulder level. Opposite hand is thumb touches sternum and then point straight up to the ceiling. We're pressing down through palm through our hand and elbow at the same time in order to lift the sternum up towards the ceiling. Inhale, bring shoulder down and then opposite uh, other shoulder down. Lift the foot, lift the elbow, re-engage, press down even as you exhale and lift. This side is a little weaker for me. I have a little bit of shoulder pain that I've been dealing with and I can feel it on this. So I'm going easy into it, trying to find that nice groove um, of this movement. Again, three to five reps. This is a really, really important uh, assessment point, noticing the difference one side to the other. A few things to note that you may find, one that you may struggle with on this. When you press, you may find the opposite leg wants to lift up in order to assist. If that's happening, that's fine for now, but we want to get, we want that to go away. So that'll be something that we're going to work on. Um, you may find that that lack of hip mobility, if that front hip is tight and you can't get your glute, that you are going to struggle with sinking that elbow and foot pressing through at the same time. And more than likely you're going to turn your chest again. It's not a terrible thing. If that's how it looks right now, we're going to work with it. It will get better over time. But these are the things that we want to pay attention to. What's different one side compared to the other side? All right, we're going to change positions again. And now we are getting into our inverted position. Palms are grounded uh, next to the hips, slightly behind the hips. And I want palms grounded down, fingers spread. And we're going to start with our kind of our bowls of soup, elbow spirals again. I want those elbows turning in towards the body and then spiraling out away from the body. We're going to exhale as we spiral them in. We're going to inhale as we spiral them out. And as we're doing this, just like with the quadruped position, Notice the shoulder blades as the elbows spiral in those shoulder blades are going to want to roll up towards your ears. We can allow that to happen. Get that nice big shrug. See if you can feel some stretch in the upper back as we spiral out and away. Shoulder blades should be dropping down, depressing down towards your hips like they're reaching to the floor and that should lift your sternum up and you should feel a nice opening through the chest. As we spiral in, we are exhaling, drawing navel in. You can even scoop the pelvis as you get that nice stretch across the upper back. You should get a little bit of stretch down into the low back and then inhale as you spiral out and get nice and tall. And as we inhale, we've been doing our breath work of filling up that abdominal wall. I want to see on that inhale as we're spiraling out and lifting in the chest, try to move that breath up into your clavicles, up into this upper chest region. It's not going to move a whole lot, but I want to engage that breath moving up as we're spiraling out. On the next inhale, as we spiral out and get nice and tall, uh, we can change our foot position a little bit and go cross leg if you need to, but we're going to maintain downward pressure, outward spiral, packed shoulders. And we're going to do a little bit of light neck mobility. So from here, we're going to check our blind spots. Looking over the left shoulder, 
slow squeeze. Inhale as our head comes to center. Exhale as we look over our right shoulder. Slow squeeze. And I really want to move from the chin. We're seeing how far can you move your chin over the crest of the shoulder. That will help prevent us from tilting and turning from our forehead, which is not going to get quite as much rotational mobility in the neck. So I want to reach from the chin, exhale, going side to side. And this, just like some of the other movements, is an excellent assessment point. How does the range of motion feel turning to your right compared to turning to your left? Next, we're going to work our light tilt. Head is facing, faces forward, lightly tilting ear as if we're dropping it to the shoulder, but I don't want to drop it very far. Then opposite ear, we're lifting it up like we're trying to touch the ceiling or like there's a piece of string pulling that ear up. Inhales, we come to center, going to the other side. Nice lift. As you lift the ear up, you can also engage downward through that, uh, that same side palm of the hand. So you can press down as you're lifting up in order to create a little bit more traction. Good. And then last we'll do is some shallow neck rolls. Letting the head drop down to the chest, ear goes to the shoulder, gaze comes up to the ceiling, opposite ear to the opposite shoulder, and chin to the chest. And then we can slowly smooth that out into a circle. I don't want this to be painful, but if you're feeling some crackly in the neck, as long as it is not painful, it's okay. And I want to think about we're just kind of going through and decrackling the crackle. If it is painful, then you need to back off. Once we've done five circles in one direction, we're going to switch and move slowly into the other direction, keeping it shallow to start with, making sure there is no pain. I do not want it to move into pain with our neck mobility. But do notice the differences of how it feels moving in one direction compared to the other direction. Good. We can shake the arms out. We're going to do one more thing. Uh, this is going to be where uh, we are getting into that uh, area with shoulders where I, I suspect a lot of people are going to really struggle and drop out. Um, this is, and I'm, I want to put a warning here because if you have sensitive shoulders, yeah, you're dealing with shoulder pain, this may be too much. Really pay attention to the rules of pain. If you're getting into the level one, level two, keep your reps light. This is an area, this is something we are going to improve over time. It will take weeks and months. You're not going to do it in a day. There's no reason to hurt yourself trying to force or push yourself to look the way I'm doing it in this video. You have to do it to what your body is capable of. And that starts with listening to the rules of pain. Your body is going to guide you by paying attention to those rules. So we're coming back to grounded palms. We're in our inverted position. Feet are gonna be in front and we're actually going to uh, put our tripod feet, connect our feet to the floor. Hands are engaged down. We're coming back to our elbow spirals in, allows those shoulder blades to round up to the ears. And then as we externally spiral, feel those shoulder blades pack. I wanna feel that chest lift and open up. And we're gonna to continue to push down through the floor as we lift our hips lightly off the floor. When we bring, and then we can bring our hips right back down to the floor. Let the elbow spiral in as we exhale. Ex inhale, spirals us back to tall. Nice open chest, pack shoulders. And we're gonna see if we can lift the hips up a little higher. So real important here. 
We are working on this spiral action through the shoulders. This is a huge function of our body, this spiral. And so I want to make sure that we are externally spiraling as we push. Our shoulders should, chest should be open, shoulders should be packed down and back. If your shoulders are rounded forward as you're lifting your hips up, then you are like, you're, that, that's an indication that you do not have the stability in the shoulders for this next part and you need to back off and you have to work on this. Getting good at this right here. We'll start with slow lifts. If you are able to have that spiral, as we lift hips up towards the ceiling, we're going to lift higher, scooping the tailbone up as we press through the palms. Inhale brings us all the way back down. Keep that chest open until the hips touch. Then the shoulders can round forward. Let me get into the breath on this one because there's a two-phase breath. As I, my shoulders round forward, I am exhaling. As I spiral my chest open, I am inhaling. And then as I lift my hips up off the floor, I am exhaling again. Inhaling as I bring my hips back down when they kiss the floor. Exhaling as I round arm shoulders forward. Inhale as they round back. Exhale as we lift. Inhale to the floor. Exhale as we round. Now with each one, I want to see if we can scoop the tailbone up a little higher and I want to continue to spiral through my shoulders and lift my chest up even higher. Now, if you're able to get to this nice tall tabletop that I'm, that I'm getting into, we can play at that level. So playing at that level. So I'm going to scoop, spiral, I'm up. Now I can play with light spirals, allowing the shoulders to round forward and to spiral even more as I scoop higher with my tailbone. I'm staying elevated. I'm doing the spiral through the shoulders, feeling that spin as it packs more and scoop. And bring hips all the way back down to the floor. All right, so I'm gonna go through one last movement. And this may be for an audience of one. This is where we're going to get into a lot more challenge. So we just did quadruped. We're going to go to an ipsilateral, basically a long sit, ipsilateral long sit. So I'm bringing one foot flat to the floor, other leg is straight. My opposite hand from the foot that's on the floor is grounding down. And I want to spiral that elbow out and away. And I want to see if we can do the basically the same movement we just did in our quadruped, inverted quadruped, driving down through one foot, pressing and spiraling through one arm. This leg will stay, the foot will stay on the floor, but we got to lift both hips up. So nice inhale. As we exhale, we're spiraling as we push, driving through a tripod and scooping that tailbone up towards the ceiling. Inhale as we bring the hip all the way back to the floor. Now again, I wanna have my sternum kind of reaching up towards the ceiling as I lift. Inhale, bringing it all the way back down. And we can see if we can do the same thing on the other side. Nice grounded palm, opposite foot is flat to the floor. We're spiraling this elbow as we press and drive reaching that tailbone up. We're again spiraling out through that elbow. Inhale, bringing the hip back down to the floor. If you're able to do this, notice if it feels harder or easier on one side 
compared to the other. This left shoulder is a little weaker. I've been dealing with some shoulder pain in it. However, this movement feels really good on it and is actually the movement that seems to be making it feel a little bit better. So it can be a powerful movement if you have access to it. All right, we will come all the way back down to the floor, laying on our back, we'll make some big C shapes with our hands, thumbs in the rear, index fingers in the front. We're gonna finish with some light crocodile breath. Hands are below the rib cage and above the hip bone. And we're gonna inhale in through the nose. And I want that inhale to expand the abdominal wall so that it pushes out on the hands. It should push into the thumbs and your back, index fingers and your abdominals, and out through the palms and the side of the body. On the exhale, Feel that navel draw all the way into the spine like you're pushing your spine into the floor. And with each inhale, see if you can expand the walls of that abdominal, the abdominal walls a little bit bigger, like you're blowing it up like a balloon. As you inhale into that balloon, you're in, breathing into tension as you exhale, allow all the tension to melt off your body. Notice your head and your shoulders relax to the floor. And then inhale, fill up that balloon, filling in the tension. On the exhale, allow that tension to melt. And let your arms soften by the side. Get a couple more breaths. Bring that breath up into the ribs, in the chest, and the shoulders. Again, breathe into tension. And then on the exhale, allow tension to release onto the floor. And when you're ready, we'll open our eyes and we're going to very slowly sit up before we stand, making sure we're not dizzy or lightheaded.